Hello folks, it's Echo here. It's been a while since we spent some time on the Totally Not Prepared server. So I'm on here showing you the vault. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my little desert oasis here and show you all the thoughts that I had going into it, the design perspective, some of the neat little tricks that you might wanna use in your bases. This might not be a fully fortified horde base, but I did manage to pack quite a bit of defensive measures in here, you know, just in case. So as I typically do, I probably went overkill on this and made it to be able to produce anything that I could possibly use as well as be able to support the community on Totally Not Prepared. And thus was born my idea to build a little garden. I never thought I'd achieve Echo's goal of setting up a farm to table restaurant served exclusively out of vending machines. But here we are. The garden on top of the vault. <laughs> These videos keep getting goofier and goofier. Oh man, let's get into it. So if you've seen many of my bases before, you know I have a huge tendency to combine horde bases and crafting bases all into one. Well, on the Totally Not Prepared server, I had already built the community horde base. And so I decided to build myself a separate crafting area just to see what I could do with it. And that's how I came up with the idea for the vault here. Now, if you see the outside of it here, it doesn't look like anything too fancy. But once we get inside, this is one of the most gorgeous designs I think I've ever come up with. The lighting in here is just incredible. So let me walk you through it. So if you've seen my other video that I have on motion sensors, this uses the same format as that, where I've got the motion sensors embedded in the floor. You can see a link to that one up in the top right to see how I did that. And then you come into this central parking area. And this is when you start to see the magic. Now we're gonna get into there in just a second and I'll show you the whole crafting area. But first I wanna show you the, the idea that I had when I was designing this. I started to fill in all the sides and I noticed how gorgeous this red rock here is in the background. And so I had an idea of saying, hey, what if I built the lights into the wall? And just let that red stone um, slash dirt just be the backdrop for everything. So I built the lights into the wall and then covered everything with security grates and it gave this crazy filtered look with the light coming through. So in terms of defenses and whatnot, the way I built this, I wanted to be able to, you know, just craft and run as many forges as I wanted and not have to worry about things. So in the front of the base, what I've got going on here is SMG turrets on each side on the left and right. They're wired up through motion sensors, so they only kick on if we've got friends showing up that aren't invited. Uh, additionally, there's an air raid siren critter back behind there that lets me know that they're there. The original concept of this was that this would be an air gapped spot. So if the zombies broke through there, I was going to put turrets along the side here, but I just realized after seeing how much damage the SMG turrets did, that was pretty overkill. So once you get into this area, there's two things to show you. Oh, we'll show you the crafting area first, and then we'll show you what's up that way. That's, that's the way to our little upstairs garden. So you notice there's these walkways that go all the way across the top. And then you've got these vault doors on the side. These house all the wiring areas. So the wiring comes here, goes down through the floor. You've got additional wiring runs that go all through the bottom of this so that you've got the wires hidden. And then up from here, this gets you onto the walkway. And so if the zombies manage to break through, you would have a secondary fighting position up here where you can move around the whole base. Additionally, up here, you've got access to the main area of the vault through here, but we're gonna go ahead and go on through the bottom. And if, you, if you're wondering why that's yellow and you haven't seen some of my other videos and whatnot, I like to color code my wiring as much as I can. And I'll show you a little bit more of that once we get inside the vault. Oh man, I love this. Oh, and second layer of defense, we also have SMG turrets here, one on this side and one on this side. And I used a little trick. So the SMG turrets are pointed on a diagonal this way. And I did that because if the zombies break through this first door, then the SMG turret can shoot through here 
or through there. So if they somehow get past the trajectory where they can't shoot through that rock, they're also going to get hit here as they're trying to bust through this door. All right, now let's see what we have in the vault here. I love this room so much. Every time I come in here, it makes me happy. So I built this crazy mesh. And what I did is I flipped the security grates um, so that they're uh, on a 90 degree angle flip each time. So that that way the light filters through, not just in slats, but gives you that cross hatch look coming through. And then I built all my crafting here in a pretty logical fashion. This is actually my favorite layout that I've done. I've got um, all my weapons and tools. So this is kind of final crafted stuff. So that way I know the things that I need immediately are at the towards the back of the room. So this is weapons, tools, clothing, all that good stuff. And on the right side are all my consumables. So this is going to be my food, my meds, any type of ammo and things like that. And then lastly, the stuff across here are items that I either need to bring back up to the farm, which I'll show you in a second, or out to the community store, which I'd be selling. And then through the center here, I just logically arrange things so that, you know, they, they work with the associated thing, the associated, the associated things, the associated uh, crafting areas. So for example, this is a, a separate station than the forges over there. This is primarily meant to process metals. Uh, as well as ammo. And then this is strictly concrete. And that, that way I didn't have to worry about having, um, having uh, the things, the crucibles in every single forge. I, so all six of those are crucible laid and these are not. So then I've got basic material inputs that go to either side, depending upon how I'm using. And then lastly over here, I've got my concrete mix, my absurd amount of concrete mix. I've probably filled this up two or three times uh, on the server so far. And then blocks because I was running out of room for concrete mix. So I just started making blocks and tossing them in there. And then lastly, this moves across to my crafting and other type of areas. So just to give you a view from the upstairs, because it looks so cool when you're up here and walking across and seeing the hatch work. So this is what I meant up close if you see it. I just flipped those so that the light goes through two different layers and it gives this really gorgeous pattern and also gives the diamond shape that you see coming through the background there. Now, I won't lie, the, uh, the wiring for this was a total nightmare. <laughs> it took a lot of work, a lot of breaking things and re-breaking things. So you can also come in from up here if you want. So multiple entrances into here. And then you'll notice I had vault doors on the bottom. One I never got to using. Let's see if I can glitch through here. What am I doing? So that one I didn't end up using. The ones on the side here are the access to be able to get to the turrets in here. This is the power for those turrets, so we don't necessarily have to have them turned on. And then back here is where we put all the power runs. So in this room right here, and I started to label these and I guess I failed. So I've got multiple generators set up. And again, I like to remind myself what they're for. So th this color is indicating that it's controlling the doors. Um, so that's the one of the critical ones to make sure that we fuel. Yellow is gonna be for lights. This is the front door turrets. This is the interior turrets. I didn't get around to um, color coding that one. And then this one is a secondary set of doors that go to the back side of the base. And you can see way back here, I've got one land claim and I actually have a secondary land claim up above because this was so tall that they were, uh, the zombies were spawning on top. Now I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll give you a little idea. This is how I did all of my, my cable wiring. Make sure I've got my lights on here. So I've got all the wires run down through here. And then all of this runs all the way back to the front of the base. And even to get to those SMG turrets at the beginning, you can come all the way back out to here. And I have access to reload those, change any settings with the motion sensor from here. So that gives me all the access that I need to get to pretty much so everything in the base. Additionally, I can follow this all the way to the back here, to that back entrance that you saw when you came in that leads out the door here to the other farm. 
So why don't we take a quick look? That's where we're going to close things out. There's not going to be a horde battle, obviously, for this one. I just wanted to show you around here. So hopefully you're enjoying this. If so, consider dropping a like and subscribe. I'm going to I'm gonna head up to the farm and show you what that's all about. This is a crazy amount of digging, by the way. So here again, I wanted to kind of leave the natural rock face in place. So I put pillar supports along the way that are not really necessary, but gave a good look. And for the all for the lighting on this, rather than having to string cables all the way through, I put lanterns embedded in the in the rooftops. And then again, use those security grates to get some good looking lighting coming through. All right. So since I couldn't have the farm down there, well, I couldn't when I built this. I'm mean, going to have another video come up very soon. And once I do, I'll get it linked up above here. And that's going to be teaching you how to be able to grow a garden underground with no lighting. So look for that coming out maybe later this week. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try to get to it. So this is my little garden that I built. Um, and I was trying to come up with, you know, something that was a little less less symmetrical than I typically do. Uh, and this has become my favorite layout for for gardening. So what I do here is I've got two workbenches. And so I'll go and I'll harvest everything up there. And then I'll come down and I'll process the seeds using these. Surprised they don't have some left over. And then I dump all the seeds back in here. And then my food ingredients get broken up as follows. This has worked out as a really great setup for me where I do meat, brains, and fat. Don't ask. I, I don't know how I came up with that initially, but it works out well. So this will have, you know, I think I burned the last of my fat because I was making community food, but I'll put all that in there. I try to keep a large supply of murky water and water. And then here's all my canned foods. I try to do runs. Um, I've marked a number of the vending machines around the map. And so I'll do runs every day that I'm on the server and pick up canned goods so that I can make some of the high-end foods. Food ingredients are gonna be all my, you know, everything that I'm getting here from the from the garden. And then lastly is be my prepared food, which is probably gonna be empty because I typically rotate everything from this down to either my crafting area downstairs or I take it over to the community base to sell. So here is the garden layout. Nothing especially special about it. I just wanted it to have, you know, a broken up feel so that I could plant different things depending upon my mood. And then down here is where we have our little mushroom farm. So again, made use of some lanterns under here so I didn't have to worry about running wiring. And then that gives that power down there. So the tower in the center is here for nothing more than aesthetics. I did have some ideas for it. I've got a ladder rung that goes up to the top but otherwise that's it and this is much like my other areas where i've got the the sensors here i've got a shut off switch if you wanted to make sure that you're not accidentally turning it on and off as you walk over this so that is my base on the totally not prepared server from my crafting and farming perspective i hope you all enjoyed this and i will see you on the next one take care Echoes out.